Good day folks, this is a piece of red oak that was salvaged from an old pallet, some people call them skids, pretty hard wood, pretty uh, tough, I decided to make a rubber band gun for my grandson from it, various tools employed, first was a, a drill to dig in in certain places, cut out here for the channel. And cut out here, Larry, you get inside, so you cut out with your coping saw and remove pieces from it. Uh, some of it was done with table saw, some more pieces done with a coping saw here to give a shape at the end. Another piece done here with a, to cut out that little triangle wedge. And up here, cut out that piece. So a lot of the, the board got uh, cut away and discarded to leave with the, uh, the shape. Just sketched out with a pencil and then attacked with various implements to get the shape. Now I'm sanding it down, trying to get it a bit smooth and stuff. Uh, getting close uh, to finishing it off. It's uh, quite a bit of sanding and stuff left there yet. Instead of uh, the traditional uh, clothespin gun, what most people uh, uh, know uh, intimately, uh, I guess from from childhood, that uh, you know, the, quite a, a lot of the young fellows uh, made these up for shooting rubber bands. Just put a clothespin on your gun and you operate it in by pushing down on the clothespin and, and uh, releasing your rubber band. I want to see if I could make one with a trigger. So you get a piece of the same type material. It's uh, red oak. Oh, I believe it's red oak. It was salvaged from a pallet, once, like I say, once again. And uh, uh, a link also made of red oak with a little uh, dowel sticking out on that part of it there, and a hole in the other end to accept another dowel on top of the clothespin. So this trigger has a, a little relief on one side, you can see here. It's a little relieved on this side. This side is flat, but this side is stepped in a little bit. That's to accept the link. So you just uh, put that on there like so. So the trigger operates the link that operates the clothespin. So that just goes in the channel, the cut a channel inside of here with the drill and chisel and various implements. And of course there's a quarter inch uh, diameter dowel. The whole gun is only 28 inches long. There was never an old plan or any diagram or anything. It was just uh, chip it away and, until it fits, you know. And uh, here's the pivot point right here, this little dowel for the trigger. It operates the link and instead of uh, just putting a regular clothespin in the dowel which I could have done I decided to beef it up a little bit and put a, uh, a little uh, extension here for loading so you could uh, it wouldn't have to touch the trigger to load it and uh, use two clothespins so this, uh, this part of, the, of uh, the other clothespin I just uh, put it up here so the dowel sits in that right here, dowel sits through there, and then goes right on into the link. So this is how uh, the operation works. Very, very, very simple. And then after that, uh, at a knot hole, which is similar to this one, only a little bit bigger, which is a knot hole in, in a piece of wood, and uh, made up a trigger there that just fits right in there. So we're still doing a little bit of work on there, still got to take it down a little bit, a little bit more sanding and finishing and so on. So we're getting close to the, to the end of the, of the adventure. But you can see here that the, uh, as you pull the trigger, the clothespin opens and uh, will release your rubber band. Now it's a winter project, uh, something to do, uh, utilize a, a bit of old wood. Uh, from from a pallet it was salvaged uh, scrap basically this was also from a pallet but this one is softwood but it seems to be a relatively hard piece of softwood because of uh, the knot hole uh, these dowels are bought locally at any hardware store they're usually some type of hardwood although they're generally not really that hard and of course clothespins you, you can get most anywhere Hope you enjoyed the video guys uh, and thanks for watching. Take care all. Bye bye.